Igneous Rocks and Minerals What is a rock? A rock is a naturally occurring solid aggregate of minerals. But we didn't cover in class as what in the heck are minerals? We know one thing, it is not an aggregate. Minerals are the fundamental building blocks of rock and, as such, form the basis of our understanding of the science of the earth. Exactly what is meant by the term mineral. It is crystalline structure, which means ordered atomic structure. It is solid. It's naturally occurring. Thus, the products of industrial commercial processes are not considered true minerals. Industrial produced minerals, such as synthetic rubies or sapphires, are readily recognized because of their purity of chemical composition. But if they are created by machines, then they are not considered a mineral. Minerals are inorganic, which means not made by an organism. And they have specific chemical composition, though we understand that nature is considerably more messy than a laboratory. So intrusions and deviations are quite common. Are these minerals? What do you think? Is water a mineral? Minerals are solid substances with a crystalline structure. So no, water is not solid. How about ice? It's solid. Is it crystalline? To be crystalline means that the atoms within the solid are arranged in a geometric pattern that is unique to that mineral. Ice has a definite ordered structure, so it meets that criteria for a mineral. How about naturally occurring? Where was this ice cube made? If it were made in a freezer, would that be considered man-made? So ice cubes are not minerals. How about snowflakes? Snowflakes are considered to be minerals because they form naturally in the Earth's atmosphere. And can you think of another naturally occurring ice formation? Glaciers. Yes, the ice in glaciers are considered to be a mineral, which means this is probably the most prevalent mineral on the face of the Earth. This glacier is from high in the mountains in Argentina. Awesome! Well, how about cubic zircona? Also known as fake diamonds, they are solid, crystalline, inorganic, with a specific chemical composition, which means it's a homogeneous solid. It's the same throughout. Is it naturally occurring? No, so cubic zirconia is not a mineral. Well, amber, it's a very pretty gemstone that goes by many names. It is fossilized tree sap that often captures index or other incursions. Though hard, amber is not a mineral because it has an organic origin, tree sap. And it also has an amorphous structure. In other words, there's no internal arrangement of atoms. It's another way of saying crystalline structure. How about diamonds? This one always generates a good debate. Since diamonds come from coal and coal comes from organic things, you might say diamonds have an organic origin. However, diamonds are pure carbon bonds. The hydrocarbon bonds from the original plant have long since been replaced. Therefore, diamonds are considered minerals. Minerals must have a definite composition, though it may be a complex formula. This mineral have a, has a simple one, table salt, NaCl. Since nature is quite messy, though, there's probably other things in there. Is this a mineral? Yes, it meets all the criteria. It's crystalline, solid, naturally occurring, inorganic, it's not made by an organism, and it has specific chemical composition. Here are some mineral examples you may be familiar with. Gypsum, rubies, which and here's quartz, also extremely common. Sil silicon and oxygen, two of the most common elements on Earth. Before I go on much further, I want to let you know what a native element is. That's a substance formed of one type of atom, usually metals. Sometimes I'll just call them natives. And again, that means it's a substance formed of one type of atom, usually metal. It doesn't have to be, though. Sulfur is not considered a metal, but gold certainly is. It might help you to organize minerals and rocks by recalling that nature has a hierarchy. Elements are at the top. All matter in the world, in the universe, all matter is made of the basic elements that you can find listed on the periodic table. There's hydrogen, there's sulfur, aluminum, oxygen, all. Next come the minerals. 
Minerals are made of elements arranged in an orderly pattern. Then those minerals are often broken, recombined, squished, and heated into aggregates. Again, that means collections. Aggregates called rocks. If you take really, really thin slices of rocks, you can often see the tiny bits of minerals that compose the rock. They are no longer regular, which is why it is called a rock and no longer a mineral. So this then is nature's hierarchy. Elements at the top, minerals are made of elements, and rocks are made of minerals. I hope this helps you organize that. Back to minerals. How do minerals form? Minerals form through crystallization of melted materials, which hot molten rock, and from the crystallization of materials dissolved in water. When minerals form from the molten rock, it cools and forms the mineral. Slow cooling gives time for larger crystals to form. If undisturbed, the crystal will grow into a regular pattern. With rapid cooling, there is no time for the magma to form large crystals. When minerals form from solutions, the solution evaporates and leaves the mineral behind. For example, when ancient seas evaporated over millions of years, it left behind thick deposits of halite. Pure minerals that crystallize underground, hot water solutions often form veins. A vein is a narrow channel or slab of mineral that is sharply different from the surrounding rock. Deep underground, solutions of hot water and metals often follow fractures or cracks within the rock. What is an ore? A mineral is an ore if it contains a useful substance that can be mined at a profit. In other words, an ore is a type of rock that contains minerals with important elements including metals. Ores are extracted through mining. These then are processed to extract the metals of interest from the waste rock. Geology has a strong tradition of work in the field. Identification of rocks and minerals start in the field. However, today, more and more of the identification is finalized in the lab using techniques and equipment that are not available in the field. I've compiled a list of the main identification methods used in the field. First is probably color. Of the physical properties, color is very easy to determine. It's a reflection of certain electromagnetic waves to an eye. Streak is another test used quite commonly. It's the color of the finely crushed mineral. You have this ceramic-like material and you scratch the rock against it and it leaves a streak. The streak helps you identify the mineral. The color of the streak is different for the different types of minerals in the rock. Texture is how it feels to the touch. Rocks can feel smooth, rough, ragged, greasy, soapy, or glassy. For instance, talc is often described as greasy. Luster is the way a mineral reflects light. You can see there's a metallic luster, a resonant luster, and a glassy luster. Hardness is determined by observing the comparative ease or difficulty with which one mineral is scratched by another. Mohs hardness scale is often used to determine the hardness of it. Often you don't have the rocks in the field where you have to the right or fingernail, copper penny, iron nail, glass, steel file, and steel plate. If it scratches the rock, then you know the rock has less hardness than, for instance, your fingernail. Cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to break along smooth planes parallel to zones of weak bonding. Here's an example of rocks exhibiting different types of cleavage. Here's a rock that's showing no cleavage. This rock does not separate along a plane. We say that it has no cleavage. Instead, we say it has Fracture. Fracture is breakage that is not flat. A mineral may have good cleavage in one direction, but fracture in another. These minerals do not have planes of weaknesses and break irregularly. We say they are fracture. To determine cleavage and fracture, you'll need a rock hammer and a magnifier. Carefully break the mineral and observe the shapes and angles of the pieces. Remember the formula for density? If you put three substances of the same volume, but different densities in a beaker without shaking it, they will separate according to their different densities. The lightest vegetable oil will stay on top, 
and molasses, the densest, will stay on bottom. You might want to try this out some rainy day. What happens when you shake it? Will it eventually separate into layers again? It is difficult in the field to determine the absolute density of a rock. Instead, a relative method has been developed that compares the density to water of an equal volume. How can you easily get the same volume of water out in the field? Hint. Remember measuring the volume of the five pennies in our measurement lab? So now that I've covered a little bit of minerals, let's see how well you remember this information. Go ahead and try out these easy quizzes on minerals. For more information, try these sites. I hope you enjoyed this.